Hey folks, today we're going to be taking a look at the R9270X in its MSI Hawk form. Now if that's a GPU that you're not familiar with, you're more than certain going to be familiar with its offshoot cousin, the GPU at the heart of the PlayStation 4. Now this card is getting on for about 7 years old at this point, and that means it's probably seen its fair share of gaming, and by looking at the condition of it, it's in need of a little bit of TLC. Overall though, the fans, they still spin freely, which is great, but everything is just caked in dust and grime and quite a lot of fluff, which has all got to be hampering the performance of the card. Now looking at the back, you can even see that there is the original warranty void if removed sticker, which means that this card is still running the OEM thermal paste it left the MSI factory with 7 years ago. So what we're going to do today is simply strip the card back, get everything cleaned up and put it back together again. And at the end I'm going to be showing you exactly why you really want to be doing this if you buy yourself a used graphics card. As the temperature difference between old paste and new paste, it's simply incredible even for a small card like this. Now we're going to start off by simply removing the back plate here. You don't really need to do this but it's good to check to see there's no dust and grime built up under there. After that's done we're simply going to remove the four screws on the back which holds the PCB to the heatsink. Now immediately when I removed the last screw the heatsink simply fell off with the old thermal paste just crumbling away. Now once we've separated the heatsink and the PCB, we can start to assess exactly how grubby this card is. You can see from it that there's so much dirt and grime clogged up, the thermal pads look to have been sweating a bit which has kind of made a sticky residue which means more dirt, more fluff and more debris is going to congregate around those areas and well, everything is just kind of pointing towards something that's going to be running a lot hotter than it probably was originally intended to. Everything looks in good nick though, other than the obvious disgusting dust, which means it should be a pretty simple job to take care of it. The main tool we're going to be using for this is isopropyl alcohol wipes. Now I've got 70% isopropyl here, if you can get higher then that's better, but any kind will do. Now the next stage is going to be separating the electrical components from what we'll call solid components, things like the shroud and the heatsink in the backplate. We can be a little bit rougher with the solid components in our cleaning techniques, but we want to take care with anything that's electrical. So removing the fans leaves us with the heatsink itself, the twin frozer fan shroud and obviously the backplate. Now for the solid components, all I'm going to be doing is rinsing these underwater. High pressure and hot water should remove the bulk of the grime and the dust buildup. You might need a little toothbrush or something to kind of scrub the hard to reach areas, but that should take care of all the fluff that's built up in between the fins and any debris that's caking the other metal elements. Afterwards though, it's really important to make sure that everything is really dry. So whether that means leaving it overnight somewhere or using something like a data vac or a hair dryer to get all the water out quickly and get it dried up. However you do it, you want to make sure that it's all dry and there's no water remaining. On to the PCB now and as you can see we've got a metal back brace which also acts as a heatsink for the VRM and also 7 of the 8 memory modules. Now removing it is as easy as removing two screws and once we've done that we can assess the condition of the thermal pads underneath, as well as the PCB. We can see that it's mostly just surface build up of dirt and grime, there's nothing standing out as being of a concern here. So what I'm going to be doing for this is using some PCB cleaner or ECB cleaner which is just electric circuit board cleaner and dousing the PCB in that, and I'll be going over it again with some isopropyl wipes. When it comes to the thermal pads, well they're still in really good nick, there's nothing brittle here, and other than a bit of surface dirt, they look pretty good. Now we could reuse these pads simply by cleaning them up, and I'm going to show you that cleaning the pads actually brung them up nicely, but I happen to have a few extra thermal pads here, so I'm just going to replace these in the end. But as you can see, cleaning up the thermal pads with a little isopropyl wipe, it actually came up really good. And at a push, you could simply reuse these. 
Now it's important to note that you can easily use isopropyl alcohol on your PCB or any other components. It's not going to damage or harm anything. And as you can see, if you're using alcohol which will evaporate really quickly, then you don't even really need to worry about letting it dry off. Once everything is clean, the fans, the heatsink, the shrouds, then it's got to be a case of reassembling everything in the reverse order of how you disassembled it. Of course, you're going to need to add some thermal paste back on to that GPU die. But you can see with the heatsink and the fans reassembled, how clean it looks. And this is a seven year old card, the fans are spinning even more freely now and there's no dirt whatsoever caked onto that heatsink. And that's simply using water and isopropyl wipes. I've stuck the backplate on here and I'm re-screwing in the heatsink and attaching it to the PCB. And it's important when you're re-tightening the heatsink that you kind of go in a diagonal fashion to ensure an even distribution of that thermal paste and pressure across the PCB. Flipping the card over, you'll see the clean fans and the clean shroud once again. Now I think the card looks pretty cool like that, but of course we've cleaned up the heatsink shroud, so it would be a bit of a disservice not to reattach it, plus I really love these old twin frozer designs. It kind of got me thinking, everything on this card is aluminium and it looks really nice, and it's a really solid, well-built card. Compared to more modern cards which use masses of plastic everywhere, this thing feels really premium, so I'm really happy that I got a chance to refurbish this and maybe keep it kicking on for another few years in somebody's rig. The big question though is why would you want to do this? Well, the answer is simply thermal performance. Now, before I refurbished it, I run it through a 3D Mark stress test with the fans locked at a set RPM. Now, when doing this, the GPU temperature on the unrefurbished card peaked at around about 80 degrees. Likewise, the VRM thermals, they peaked at 70 degrees by the end of the test. Now, after we refurbished the card, using the same fan speeds, the same case, everything exactly the same, this time, the GPU only peaked at around about 62 degrees. So we're saving almost 20 degrees off the maximum GPU temperature. And it was a similar story with the VRMs. Before, we were hitting 70 degrees, and after the refurb, we'd knocked about 7 degrees off of that, and it was sitting about 63 degrees. Which just goes to show that, although the card was working fine before the refurb, it obviously wasn't transferring the heat like it was designed to. Now that could lead to degradation of the PCB and degradation of the other components on it. So by doing this, we're not only getting better thermal performance, but also extending the life of the card. Interestingly though, one component of the system whose temperatures did creep up was the CPU. Now it crept up by about two or three degrees, but I put that down to the graphics card now being able to more effectively exhaust the heat away from it and into the case. Whereas before, with all that dirt, grime, and the really rubbish thermal paste, it was kind of just sitting there cooking in its own filth. Whereas now with the clean heatsink and the new thermal interface material applied, it's able to get that heat away from the GPU and into the case to be exhausted by the case fans, just exactly like how you'd want. So it's a little trip down memory lane this, it's really worthwhile you refurbishing your old graphics card, especially if it's getting 5 years or older. Chances are the thermal paste that was applied at the factory will not be working at its optimal level anymore. But hey, I would love to know what you guys think of this Hawk MSI R9278X. I think it looks great for a budget card. And playing with these older hardware SKUs is kind of making my yearn for more high quality offerings in today's mid-range hardware. But hey, if you've got any component refurbishment stories of your own, leave them down below and I'll be sure to read them. All I'll say at this point is thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the comment section down below, and in the next video.